Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to NFL Minds channel. I am pumped to bring you another round of jaw-dropping action in our episode, Most Disrespectful Moments This NFL Season. Buckle up, because we're diving deep into the wildest, most jaw-dropping moments that'll make you go, did that really just happen? From jaw-dropping touchdowns to sideline showdowns, this season has been an absolute roller coaster of epic proportions. So grab your popcorn and your soda, settle in, and get ready to witness the most disrespectful moments that have us all on the edge of our seats. This is part two, and trust me, it's gonna be a wild ride. Let's begin. Firstly, I witnessed one of the most nasty things I have ever seen. Dak Prescott created a commercial solely to make fun of five NFL clubs. Dak planned to use the kits to disrespect five of his opponents by telling them he wanted to poop on them, even though the kits were made for a good reason. Instead, Dak was supposed to merely be promoting kits that fans could use to check whether they're healthy. Okay, so by choosing some random pictures to sort of hide his meaning, but when you compare all those options with these NFL emblems, it's obvious what he meant. However, the wild celebrations this season that resulted in players being fined thousands of dollars are far more disrespectful than even pissing on teams. Diamond Teeth Boy, Justin Jefferson, was the first player to do so after he performed this. Dude admitted to his defender that he was too little. It is obviously impolite to make fun of another man's size. However, the NFL considers taunting to be unsportsmanlike behavior, thus JJ is fined $10,000 for it. You would assume that other players would have learned better behavior if a well-known player of that caliber was allowed to act disrespectfully. However, Josh Allen acted disrespectfully at this performance a few weeks later. After the dude's fake pass caused his opponent to jump, he scored the touchdown and pointed directly at him. Now, it goes without saying that fingering someone on live television is illegal. Thus, Josh was also reported for taunting. He was also fined $10,000 after the game, but the total of the two punishments was just $20,000. DK Metcalf was only penalized 10 times as much for his disrespectful moments. He picked up a whole new language this season in order to offend his rivals without getting into trouble. The reason he received $200,000 was due to his constant trash talk. DK chose to covertly study a language that the referees were unable to grasp for this reason. Man truly picked up sign language as a mean of demeaning others. This was DK's first live performance, and it occurred while he was under the opponent's guard number 44. That guy wasn't simply feeling himself after that touchdown. To the individual he scored on, he was communicating with sign language, meaning 44 is my son. Okay, so it's rude to refer to a grown man who is clearly not your son as your son. However, DK's pranks persisted. DK became the Amigos. DK was motivated by their lyrics from the song Bad and Bougie, so although it appeared to me that he was just babbling, he was actually insulting and demeaning his opponents with some lines he could identify to after he scored another absurd touchdown. By now, DK was just saying or signaling whatever man, so his opponents felt compelled to exact payback for his lack of consideration. That's why, later in the game, they didn't just tease him back until he became agitated, assaulted someone, and was eventually removed, which caused his squad to lose. Subsequently, a rival of DK's, who, strangely, was proficient in sign language, insulted him by posting a video on Twitter with the caption, Number 14 fucked around and found out. Some of their admirers even desired to become sign language proficient in order to show DK some disrespect. How do you sign ringless bum? exclaimed one person. It's one thing to disrespect players by picking up a new language. The next NFL player was so awful that a third grader made fun of him. That's little Aiden, aka the son of cowboy star player Trevon Diggs. When they got together for an exclusive interview though, not even dad was safe since Trevon was fired when he was questioned about his worst game of the season. He was lying a little bit though, since although Trevin didn't score three touchdowns as he claimed, he did receive a brutal scolding for one. Man, he truly burned his own father. Although the guy was burned, at least the touchdown and the childish disdain were amusing in the game. This season, I never would have imagined that I would hear of someone disobeying Jesus since Texans standout player CJ Stroud is a devout follower of his faith. 
When CJ speaks in an interview, he usually begins by expressing gratitude to the man in the picture. It has never been difficult for me to thank Jesus in the past, until afterwards, following CJ's first ever playoff match. He dominated the entire game and even defeated a squad that was picked to lose. So at first, this was all hoopla for him. After the game, he was naturally grateful. Saying thank you to Jesus, as usual, might not sound impolite. However, as a result of what he said, everything he said about Jesus was removed from the interview when it was published online by NBC. In addition to making headlines, this company's disdain for Jesus led to followers acknowledging that they had edited the video. It is abhorrent and blatantly evil, and even famous athletes like Donovan McNabb of the NFL lashed out, calling it very lame. Players always express that and to have that cut out is disrespectful. To be honest, NBC out to feel embarrassed. However, the Cleveland Browns also out to do so, as they essentially produced one of the most demeaning images they could following their players' near-death experience with Burns. This is David Njoku, the athlete who was nearly killed in this horrific incident. He sustained a second-degree burn from the fire, but it also completely melted his skin. But in spite of everything, David played in his next game to support his squad just two days after the tragedy, risking injury even though his doctor had advised him to rest and recuperate. You would think that his squad would have been praising him after persevering through everything, but they made a rude mistake not long after. The Brown social media team shared a picture of all their star players receiving presents around a tree around Christmas. At first, it seemed innocent, but after the picture went viral, David left a remark stating, Y'all did not have to put me in the fire though. How on earth could the team's graphic designer miss that, I ask you? Of all the players, they essentially threw him into the flames, which is how he nearly perished. That error was undoubtedly insulting, regardless of whether it was an accident. The following instance of disrespect was anything but an accident. During a game, a player done something so offensive that it almost started a riot throughout the entire city. Because the Dallas Cowboys are one of his team's main rivals, George Kittle detested them greatly. Kittle's mere acts of disrespects, such as making plays or assisting his team in repeatedly defeating him, were insufficient. He intended to do something to make their players, supporters, and the entire Dallas community hate him for his next game against them. It was discovered that Kittle was influenced by another renowned troll, Gary Plummer, after the latter donned an offensive outfit during a Cowboys game. Thus, on game day, Kittle finally whipped out the same exact rude thing after leading his squad to a commanding lead and scoring three touchdowns. The National Football League had to remove Kittle's undershirt from all of their highlights because it was so rude. Fuck Dallas was written on it, and Kittle eventually uploaded it on Instagram so that everyone could see it before it was removed. Immediately, Cowboys players had a sense of content. However, it wasn't just him who felt mistreated. People from all across Dallas felt the same way. One of the fans even believed that Kittle was merely doing that in order to establish himself as a mainstream figure. And he referred to Kittle as the dollar store Travis Kelsey. All of them began to criticize Kittle, including one who stated that he should be suspended for that. Okay, I could see how that may have happened. This season, there was another instance of disrespect that I found hard to comprehend. It transpired when a team extended what is possibly the most impolite contract in NFL history to their star player. Although Jamal Williams recently inked a $7.5 million contract with the Lions, he desired to establish himself before accepting a larger offer. Since the previous season was his contract's last, he began to play some of his greatest football. Jamal gained over a thousand yards of total ground gain and scored 17 touchdowns. That actually shattered Barry Sanders' record, one of the greatest players of all time. Thus, it goes without saying that Jamal led all running backs in touchdowns scored throughout that campaign. Because Derrick Henry, Christian McCaffrey, and Alvin Kamara made over $12 million annually, and Jamal made only approximately $4 million. He believed he should be compensated on par with the league's best running backs. However, after some back and forth, when it came time for Jamal to negotiate his next contract, the Lions didn't want to pay him that much. According to one story, the Lions offered him a deal that was nothing near what he wanted, and Jamal turned it down. 
Rather than pursuing further talks, the Lions just signed a player who was significantly poorer than Jamal to a larger contract than he had ever received from them. That was extremely disrespectful, as Jamal had just given the Lions his all, and now he was being pressured to explore other options in free agency. He eventually had to let go of what he thought he deserved. So this season, he unexpectedly took a little contract with the Saints, shocking everyone. I don't understand how Jamal's own team could treat him disrespectfully or give up on him in that way when he was the star. Thanks for tuning in to another epic ride through the NFL's most disrespectful moments. If you thought part 1 was so wild, well part 2 took it to a whole new level. From jaw-dropping touchdowns to sideline showdowns, we've seen it all. But hey, the NFL never sleeps. And who knows what the next season will bring? So make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell because you won't want to miss out any of the action. Catch you on the next one.